What's good? Welcome back to the Restless Creatives YouTube channel. Um, today we just wanted to talk about some photos that we took during quarantine. We had a lot of time to take a lot of different photos and stuff. And we just wanted to show you some of our favorites. So the first one that I wanted to show you guys is a picture that I took from a train platform. As we caught the train at sunrise, which was really cool. Um, what I really liked about this photo is from the platform, I was able to see the train in the distance. So I really just prepared by um, taking a burst of photos and I was able to get a progression of the train coming where the first photo was small and by the last photo you could see the majority of the train. What I really loved um, was the orange glow of the sun on the train and then how it kind of bounced towards the windows of the building on the right. So you can kind of see how I used my composition to create like a an avenue of emptiness and on one side was the building and on the other side was the train and then the sky was right above. This second photo that I wanted to show you guys is one that I took from an abandoned building. We climbed up to probably like the third story and um, it was just kind of cool because there was a lot of broken windows and stuff and when I was looking at the scenery in general it just looked kind of you know old and broken down and stuff um, but when I focused my camera to get a shot of the skyline I also noticed that I could like take it through the broken glass on the door. Um, I think it was a door or a window or something. I thought it was dope, I don't know, the, the composition gave me like a great, literally a great window of the buildings of the skyline, um, kind of in the distance. The sky was kind of a plain blue, but I really liked the way that it was shot through like the broken glass. I think that captured the whole abandoned um, status of the building. And you know me, I'm a sucker for like the skyline uh, shots. The third one that I wanted to focus on, I took it in York, um, Pennsylvania. This is a great example of how I was able to think outside the box for quarantine. I began to focus on details of cars and details of maybe like a house or a garage or, or trees or something. Um, I think where I'm so used to shooting a landscape or like a street photography setting, um, I don't think I've ever necessarily honed in on details of specific objects as I have in quarantine. This was just a photo of, it was like a, I thought it was abandoned, but I think it ended up not being abandoned because we got kicked off of the property, but um, it was just a car in a garage. I thought it was cool. I think most of my car shots feature like half of the car. Um, in this one, I just took a small sliver of the car. I like the shadows from the garage. The garage was open. Um, and just a little bit of the house too. So that was uh, the third photo. The fourth one is just kind of like a simple shot of the L train. Um, this was the this was later on in the day that we took the L. Um, there's two people just kind of waiting for the train on the side, and I think it's kind of interesting. You can see they're wearing masks. I just thought that that would be something interesting to show somebody, maybe like a few years down the road, maybe many years down the road. Um, just like a different perspective of everyday life with masks, um, you know, in quarantine. The next photo that I wanted to show you guys is, um, this is such a random photo. We went to a park, we went to Valley Forge uh, National Park. I was just kind of going to hang out at the park, but it ended up being really dope because right as we pulled up, we parked um, just on, like on a main road. And I saw uh, like a, an old school Mustang coming up the street. Um, and so I like pulled out my camera and got it ready, like, ah, if I can take some shots. Um, I took a few blurry ones, but the one that I can show you guys now was perfectly in focus, and I even got the driver waving. I guess he had seen us on the side and he had seen me taking the photo. Um, so I thought that was cool. It was a great, it was kind of like a great random moment, and I went to the park without any idea of taking photos, um, but the opportunity kind of fell in my lap, and I kind of took advantage of it. I think when you zoom in, you can see the the hand wave. He has kind of like a smirk on his face. I love the lighting. It gave a very soft um, tone to the photo. Um, and yeah, overall, I really like that one too. This next one was also a random one. Um, it was <clears throat> just as we were on the, the avenue underneath the train. Um, I was able to catch just the head of somebody leaning out the window. And I thought it was cool because there was a yellow sign um, it was like a daycare or something, I think. And um, it was dope because we were just kind of 
we were actually driving down the avenue and Isaac was in the passenger seat and he was like, yo, like, this would be a great shot. And I was like, um, I was like, yeah, this would be fire. It kind of reminds me of maybe like an old school 1990s movie um, where like the intro, like the, the characters like looking out the window and there's like credits rolling and stuff. I don't know, for me that was like a very cinematic type of um, shot and he leaned out the window for maybe a few seconds as we drove, as we stopped at the light. So it was just one of those like, take the photo and then the whole opportunity disappeared when he poked his head back in the window. Um, but I think it was perfect timing. This next one kind of goes to the theme of what we were saying about taking photos of houses and stuff. I always, forever I always thought that like, um, neighborhood photography and stuff was just kind of boring. I tend to like, more like, stuff that will really grab your attention, like graffiti I love, and I love portraits because it's a person, and I love street photography because it's so much going on. Um, the neighborhood stuff is more so like, quiet and calm and a relaxing vibe, and this is my favorite shot that I was able to get in my neighborhood. And um, we would go on a lot of walks and just spend time with family and stuff. And the lighting that day was perfect. I didn't really have to edit it too much. Um, the lighting did a lot of the editing for me, I guess you could say. But I love the brownish, yellowish that I got on the blinds of the house. Um, and the shadow of the, the next door roof on this house that I, that I photographed. Um, so yeah, honestly, probably the most simple photo I've taken that I've really enjoyed in my life, maybe. Um, but I thought that was really dope. And then this last one, I saved my favorite one for last. This is kind of goes back to the fact that we're in quarantine and we're seeing a lot of moments that may never be recreated in, in history. You know, this is like a first where everybody's wearing masks and we're seeing just so many changes. And then with the Black Lives Matter movement, um, we started to see in our city that they were bringing military tanks in to guard intersections or to guard, you know, just to be a presence around grocery stores and stuff. Um, so when we were taking the train, again, a very random occurrence that I didn't anticipate that there would be a tank, but, but we were waiting for the train from the platform. And as I looked over, I was able to see um, just a busy intersection, just a lot of stuff going on, but I saw the tanks and I was like, Oh, I would love to get a picture, like, I don't know how it's going to turn out. Um, I wasn't, I wasn't, like, planning for it or anything. I just kind of snapped it. And once I looked back at it after I had taken it, I was able to see, um, like, a bystander or, like, a, a, a normal person, I guess you could say, walking with, like, a bag of groceries, it looked like. And he was kind of looking at the, the military guard, and um, they were just kind of posted up on their tank. And I thought that was so random to see something, um kind of like post-apocalyptic, kind of like very unique and kind of eerie in a way, um, but definitely a very good capture that I really wanted to save in my collection. So those are my um, favorite photos that I've taken in quarantine. I really hope the quarantine ends soon because it has really messed a lot of people up in a lot of ways, but um, I hope you guys enjoy that. So the first photo I chose to um, use was this photo that I took actually inside of our house. Um, it was right in our front porch area, and this was taken right at the beginning of quarantine when I was honestly really struggling with photography. I had taken almost like a week off, and I was just like in the house, not really too inspired. And I remember it was just golden hour, and I saw like the front porch. I was honestly just walking into the front porch, and I just saw this picture, and I was like, whoa, I, I have to take a picture of that. And so I got two. The first one wasn't great. Um, and then the second one really just panned out, and that's how I got this. Um, I really like how it's, it just reminds me of like, honestly like, taking a nap or something like that. Like a very chill vibe. That's why I love this photo. The second photo I chose to use is this one. I was actually taking a walk with my younger brother. Uh, we took a lot of walks during quarantine because there wasn't too much to do, to be honest. I honestly just saw this opportunity again. It was very spur of the moment, very spontaneous. There was a man underneath his car doing some kind of work to it underneath his truck and uh, his legs were just sticking out and I thought that was so cool. I think that's a really cool, like capturing someone in there, just like in a really candid state. Um, and then I, I think he was like perfectly lined up with the buildings behind him. 
they're like the windows and everything just really worked out honestly and so I just snapped that picture it was great lighting again I'm, I'm a huge fan of lighting I think lighting is super important in photos and the lighting on this one just really panned out the next one I took was actually in like this parking lot um, it was a grocery store parking lot the lighting here wasn't great the, it was a, like an overcast day you can see it in the clouds not great lighting but uh, there was a mom with her kid who was walking through the lot and I remember it was me and my younger brothers and Josiah was, was there and they were getting into the shop because they were just walking through the through the parking lot so I just had to wait and as I was waiting the the mom and her kid uh, like kind of crouched down I'm not exactly sure why but they crouched down and it actually just made like for like a really cool shot somehow I don't know it was super random I don't even remember seeing them crouch down in real life I was just taking a few pictures at once um, and it really panned out I really like the composition of this I think with the sign behind it it's like almost perfectly lined up again um, I think that was that was really cool so the next one I took this is similar to what Josiah was talking about about the fact that there had been US Army officers I believe that were uh, kind of posted up in random neighborhoods around the city, more populated areas. So this one was really cool. I think it was again uh, just a great opportunity for a photo. Uh, things kind of just fell into my lap with this one. So there were army officers that were just standing there and I just again wanted to kind of document what Philadelphia was like at this time. Philly was kind of going through some crazy stuff there at like the beginning of June, end of May. And so I was just trying to capture that and I think this really um, kind of in a cool way embodies that. So the next one, um, me and Josiah actually had a shoot planned out earlier in the day on this one. Um, and so we were just shooting and the sun started to set and the skies were just crazy, going, uh, going crazy. Um, so crazy colors in the sky, a lot of pink, a lot of orange. And me and Josiah really thrive off of that lighting and stuff. Um, and so for this one, I was just standing on the street and there were cars passing by and I took a few flicks of the cars. They weren't too great, um, but I think there was cool movement. And then when I took this one, there was a biker right at the time. Uh, going by and I waited for him to like be in um, be in the frame in, in the corner of the frame and to try to get as much of the sky as I could with the biker in it and um, I just think this is a really cool shot because of the lighting because of the pink skies it's really cool um, and then for my final photo this was definitely my most experimental photo I've taken in a long time definitely the most experimental one I took during quarantine it was an apartment building down the street from our house um, we it was again it was me and Josiah and we were just walking again taking another walk and I saw this opportunity and at first I didn't really want to flick it I didn't think it was gonna be that good but Josiah actually encouraged me to go and take it and so I walked up and the windows were like perfectly lined up perfectly lined up I didn't even really have to do too much there I just simply um, lined them up and it was perfect and I think what I like so much about this is it's um, these two photos it kind of, they kind of go together um, it's kind of like you can't have one without the other they kind of like perfectly fit t together kind of like a puzzle um, and that's what I really like about these photos I think the windows like each window kind of tells its own story in a way and I think with the zoomed in version you kind of get a, a better picture of like that kind of like your mind goes to another place you start to you know think about like the story behind these pictures and stuff and that's honestly really what I love about photography that's what I love about street photography when you make your photos super candid you're really just capturing a moment and you're really just making that moment able to be seen in the future um, because those moments come and go so quickly um, some of them never happen again most of them never happen again and so I think it's really cool to be able to capture those kind of moments and then honestly just let the viewer perceive it as they, um, as they wish.